plastics filling the oceans and landfills. Plastic rubbish like this, containers full of low-grade plastic. Plastic pollution. Plastic waste being dumped there and in some cases burned. Hello, I'm Virginia Comolli, Research Manager at the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime and also the author of the report Plastic for Profit. Today I'm going to tell you the facts about plastic waste disposal and its connection with organized crime. Here with me I have a basket of facts and we are going to go through them and discover which ones are true and the ones that are false. Ninety percent of plastic found in the ocean is washed in from just ten rivers. This is true, eight of those rivers are in Asia and two are in Africa. And all this waste eventually feeds the five infamous garbage patches that float in our oceans. You might have heard of the largest one of them, uh, which is the so-called Great Pacific Garbage Patch, whose uh, surface is three times the size of France. Globally, we generate two billion metric tons of waste, 50% of which is recycled. That is fault. We only recycle about 13.5% of all the waste that we produce. And the amount of rubbish that we generate is expected to increase by about 70% by 2050, according to the World Bank. In Turkey, an average of two suspicious incinerations per month take place at recycling plants. This is false and is actually much worse. On average, two incinerations or suspicious incinerations take place each week at recycling plants in Turkey. But this practice of burning waste as a way of disposing of it illegally is quite common. And through our research, we have recorded cases across Europe, for instance, in places such as uh, the UK or Italy. There was a quite high profile case in Italy in 2017 where the owners of recycling plants uh, set ablaze tons and tons of hazardous mixed waste as a way of getting rid of it at no cost. But the implications of their actions were extremely severe. Uh, for weeks and weeks, the residents of nearby villages and towns had to keep their windows shut because of the fumes in the air. And they also had to discard of the produce from their gardens because of high levels of contamination in the soil. China receives more imported waste than any other country in the world. That is false. China used to receive about 45% of all globally produced waste. But this changed when, in 2017, the Chinese government announced the launch of a new policy, the National Sword Policy, which came into effect in 2018. China banned the import of about 26 types of solid waste material and also imposed strict restrictions on the levels of contaminations allowed in imported waste from abroad. The aim of this policy was to stop China from becoming a landfill from uh, foreign imported uh, waste. But all this waste had to go somewhere. A country such as Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines became the new receiving countries for all this waste, even though they often lacked uh, adequate facilities to process the waste and also law enforcement. And this situation propelled further illicit recycling practices. In 2021, one of the largest waste companies in the UK was sued for allegations of trafficking and modern slavery. This is true. Abifa Waste Management Services was sued by three claimants who were being trafficked from Poland in the, into the UK. They were part of a group of 400 people who were being trafficked by an organized crime group that uh, found them employment once arrived in the UK through a recruitment agency in uh, recycling facilities, but also uh, farms and factories. The criminals would set up bank accounts in the names of the workers and then collect their wages, whilst the workers would spend their days sorting away for about 50 pence per hour, whilst living in substandard conditions. And unfortunately, this isn't a one-off. Through our research, we uh, picked up on similar cases of workers living in exploitative and substandard conditions uh, in other uh, recycling facilities around the world, in places such as Ghana or Zambia. And elsewhere, such as in the Philippines or Indonesia, in addition to those substandard conditions, these workers have very informal uh, working arrangements and they don't have identification documents, which stops them from accessing health uh, insurance services from the government. The world's second largest shipping company stopped accepting plastic waste containers from Hong Kong in 2019. This is true. Hong Kong has a free port that has become a popular transit point for cargoes that uh, contain illicit waste. 
This is a very common practice in, in this business as a way of concealing the true origin of the or destination of cargoes containing uh, illicit waste. The company in question that stopped accepting waste coming from, from Hong Kong is Mediterranean shipping. And meanwhile, countries such as Malaysia and Indonesia have been condemning Hong Kong for allowing cargoes through their port and destined for other destinations. It is notoriously hard for criminals to hide plastic waste in the midst of paper waste because they are detected at ports. It is actually common practice for criminals to hide plastic waste in the midst of paper waste or e-waste or all those kind of waste that are subject to uh, fewer restrictions. For instance, uh, in Indonesia there is a legal loophole whereby uh, paper waste industry is self-regulated so it doesn't have to follow any of the guidelines issued by uh, government and ministries. The journey of waste that leaves the UK is now being digitally tracked from start to finish. This is fault, but it could become a reality very soon. The Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs has started developing a comprehensive uh, digitally tracking system in 2019. Uh, once completed uh, and rolled out, its implementation will become mandatory and it will replace all existing paperwork. Elsewhere, technology is also helping uh, this sector. Indonesia is pioneering a number of apps aimed at the 3.7 million uh, informal waste pickers that collect waste, even more waste than actual recycling uh, facilities. These are normally informal, um, poorly paid and socially stigmatized uh, workers. These apps will collect these workers directly with customers and make the collection process much easier and they will be able to exchange waste for money or for points to be redeemed. Of course, these apps rely on uh, the workers' uh, ability to access uh, smartphones, but certainly this is a step forward in terms of increasing uh, their uh, financial stability. If you want to learn more about illicit trading plastic waste and what can be done about it, read my report, Plastic for Profit.